Now, I've already hinted that uh, changing the subject and formula is one of those key skills that is really going to help you and make sure that you succeed at A-level maths. Um, and now I'm going to go through five examples of uh, in increasing levels of difficulty, really, and throwing up some key ideas that you need to be aware of. So the first one, nice and straightforward, is just a linear equation, y equals 4x, by well, a linear identity here, y equals 4x plus 3, and what I want to do is I want to make x the subject of the formula. So I need to get x equals. So in order to do that, I just need to make sure that anything that is on that side with x gets thrown over to the left-hand side just to get x by itself. So we've got that 3 over on the right-hand side, so I'm going to take 3 from both sides first. Okay, Do this before dividing through by 4, because it's kind of like doing bid mass uh, backwards. So deal with the, sub the subtraction first, then deal with division. So then we divide through by 4, and what I can do is I can write that as a fraction so we have y minus 3 over 4 equals x, okay? And write it like that. So that's the first one. Let's have a look at the second. Now the second, c equals 5, lots of f minus 32, all over 9. So to get f by itself in this case, I need to deal with this 9 first, okay, so to deal with 9 first by multiplying through by 9. Then I've got this 5, okay, so I can divide both sides by 5. I could multiply out those brackets, um, but there are different ways of doing this in different order, but I'm going to divide through by 5 first instead. So I'm going to have 9c over 5 equals f minus 32. And then finally, I'm going to add 32 to both sides. So we get 9c over 5 plus 32 equals f. And then I've got f by itself. It doesn't matter if you write f equals, so f equals something, or something equals f. It doesn't matter, OK? Either way around is fine. Right, what's number three? Number three, x squared plus y squared equals a squared. So, um, as it turns out, this is the equation for a circle with radius a, okay? Um, so that's something you'll learn in your first year. Now, in order to get x as the subject, the first step I'm going to do is take y squared from both sides. Okay, so that leaves me with x squared is a squared minus y squared. Now, the next step is to square root. So we square root both sides, so we get a squared minus y squared square rooted. Now, in doing that, in square rooting, that doesn't just leave me with the square root of a squared minus y squared. It leaves me with plus or minus the square root of a squared minus y squared. This plus minus just means that it can be positive or negative. Because if you square root 9, for example, you get plus or minus 3. Because positive 3 squared is 9, and minus 3 all squared is also 9. So you throw up this plus minus, and that is an important facet of this. Okay, so make sure you know that. The fourth one, a minus x t is equal to b plus y t. Now, there's going to be multiple ways of doing this. Um, you need to make sure, well, what we want is we want t equals. So we need all the t's on one side of the equation and all of everything else on the other side, effectively. So I'm going to add xt to both sides. Okay. Uh, I'm going to reorder this. So I'm going to write it as xt plus yt. Okay. 
It doesn't matter in which way for any right things when you're adding them. Okay? Then I'm going to take B from both sides. So that just leaves me xt plus yt. Now how am I going to get t by itself? Well, the only way that I can do this is by noticing that xt and yt have a common factor. So you can factorise the right-hand side as x plus y, t. And then, once you've noticed that, you can divide through by that factor and write this as a minus b all over x plus y is equal to t. Okay, so this is a key step, factorising and then dividing through by the factor. Okay, it's quite a neat trick. Right, last one, number five. We have t minus w is wa over 2b. And we need to get w as the uh, uh, subject of the equation. So the first thing that's looking worrying is that 2b. Okay, so I would multiply through by the 2b first. Multiply everything by 2b. So I'm going to get 2b t. Um, now, before I continue, some people might be thinking, well, could I write that as t2b? The answer is no. Um, it's like you can't write 2x as x2. Okay? There, when you're dealing with numbers and letters in an algebraic expression, um, the number must come first. That's, it's kind of, uh, it's not necessarily a rule as such, but it's as close to a rule as you can possibly get. One of the problems with x2, for example, is that you could misinterpret that as x squared, okay? Um, but... When it comes down to it, you should write the numbers to the left of any letters. So it should be 2bt. You could write that as 2tb, however. You could do this. That's fine. Um, nothing wrong with that. Uh, it's just convention that usually people write letters in alphabetical order. Okay, So the b comes before the t. But strictly, really, numbers to the left of any letters. So we've multiplied the 2b by the t. We're also going to multiply the 2b by the w. So we get 2bw is equal to, but well, we just have wa on the right hand side now. So now if I add 2bw to both sides, what I'm doing is I'm moving all the w's onto the right hand side of the equation. So we get 2bt is equal to wa plus 2bw. <coughs> then, I can notice that on the right-hand side, these two terms have a factor of w. So, I can write that, well, factorise, and write that as a plus 2b lots of w. And I can use the same trick that I did in this previous question, where I divide through by the factor. Okay, and that's where we would finish. Okay, so these are five examples of changing the subject of the equation. They really deserve your time and effort to practice them, just so you can get good at manipulating algebra. Because when you get onto more complicated algebra, you don't want to be wondering, ah, can I do this? Can I do that? Uh, when, if you've practiced it and you're confident at it, it will be of second nature to you.